basketball fans from around the land, do you need ass? It's the Fully Loaded Podcast. Yeah, if they win this game, they'll jump right back up. Jump right back up, so shout out to our boys. Keep keep. He tweets at me like, you got to credit the dog. And I'm like, the dog didn't even have it. Yeah, right. You know, if it's a reporter, you get beat on the story, you credit, but the dog didn't have it. I'm like, right here live, can you give us your drop, that your favorite one that you had, that you would say? All right, let the bitch walk. Thank you. <laughs> We'll see you on Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern, for the Octobox and the Witching Hour, wrapped up in (laughs) seven hours of commercial-free football. All right, and we're back for another episode. We are joined with Mike Depsey. He is an NFL alumni member of the uh, Carolinas chapter, survivor of the September 11th World Trade Center attacks, the Las Vegas Mandalay Bay shooting. Um, he, he's going to share some compelling stories with us today, and I'm l- really happy to have you here as a guest. Really appreciate you taking the time to stop by today. And we're going to talk a lot about more about your, your career and what you've done and all the things you've, you've kind of you've accomplished and the challenges you've faced. Uh, so thanks, thanks for coming by. Appreciate being here today. Yes. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, so l- first starting off, uh, tell everyone about like, your career and, and, and what you've done. up my ACL, meniscus, uh, full reconstructive surgery back in yep. 1993, the long rehab. Um, they didn't have doctors like they do today, and uh, so I was uh, still trying to hang on to what I thought would be a football career. Uh, CFL didn't work out, um, and then I got away from the Raiders, and then I ended up here in Tampa Bay, actually 1995. Nice. I was this, uh, free agent uh, kind of tryout. Jerry Angelo is a general manager. Rusty Timmons, defensive coordinator. One buck place, thinking I was going to resurrect my career, still damage goods. Uh, you know, I wasn't. I'll tell you that I didn't have my forty-yard speed like I had back in college, and uh, got an injury setback basically. So the uh, by the time training camp rolled in 1995, I was unemployed, and I thought, oh my God, what do I do with my life? So a Wall Street firm called Solomon Brothers, uh, Julius Holt and Hegel, and our firm from New York had moved down to Tampa a couple of years earlier, and uh, I got hooked up with them. Between that, I did share the story before this podcast started about um, I tried professional wrestling. Didn't work Real out quick, I'm well. sorry. Can you just bring it in just so because our audio is like really like it's it's b- it's yeah. bad. You could you could stretch that cord out to you if you want. You yeah, yeah. Perfect. We good. All right. Yep, perfect. I want to hear. I want to hear all this because yeah, it's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think we're can we, just one more time. Yep, Let's go see. ahead. Good. Just your mic check yep. real quick. Oh yeah. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. That's perfect. perfect. Yeah. Like have perfect. it like up to here. Sorry. Okay, it's, yeah. There we go. Now you're good. Perfect. Good. 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 All right. Sorry. Yeah, so I started with uh, this professional wrestling journey okay. as well yes, there in, we go. in Atlanta uh, with WCW. So after the uh, NFL dreams died, I said, okay, I'm damaged goods, but I could try professional wrestling. A guy named Terry Taylor was an agent with WWF at the time and went up there to Atlanta to power plant. I met Diamond Dallas Page, the wrestler, and uh, Bill Goldberg was in that same class, and they made it. I didn't make it four days later. I never quit on anything in my life, but I quit on that. So I went <laughs> back to Tampa. <laughs> And that's when I got hooked up with Solomon Brothers, this Wall Street powerhouse that had moved, relocated down here to Tampa, Florida, uh, to, to split their operations, and uh, relocated a couple of years later back to New York. Uh, Solomon Brothers, Smith Barney, and Citigroup merged, and uh, they relocated me back to where I'm from. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and uh, was back in New York again, feeling good, and uh, was in the World Trade Center on 9-11, wow. working for Credit Suisse First Boston at the time, and uh, that's when uh, I was, uh, to make a long story short, I was injured coming out of the second tower uh, when the second plane hit, and I was under the impact, point of impact, I was uh, knocked out, uh, uh, fractured skull, internal bleeding, I was taken to uh, NYU Downtown Medical, and I was transferred to a hospital out in Long Island, Mercy Medical in Rockville Center. And uh, out of that whole experience, I started a 9-11 charity with my friend Anthony Gardner, who lost his brother, uh, just to really mobilize survivors and uh, family members and rescue workers. And uh, that started my journey in philanthropy. Now, the 
irony was I had done a lot of work with the New York Yankees here in Tampa as mm-hmm. well. Uh, Ray Negrone, good friend of mine, had done a lot of community relations. So I kind of started to not just help out the 9-11 charity that I do, but also help out the Yankees on charity events and start the networking and start to get into that. So I've always had a double life of doing my day job and banking, but also support philanthropic causes. So that's how I kind of got involved. And then it came full circle three, four years ago with uh, Las Vegas. I was out there filming an episode of Tanked on Animal Planet with my oh friend no cool. yeah, Brett Raymer, <laughs> one of my best buddies. Uh, we were filming that weekend and in Vegas. I was up in Amelie Bay outside having drinks. I was going to Scott Bayo Chachi, his uh, golf outing the next day in Los Angeles. So all I could <laughs> think about was getting on that plane from uh, <laughs> Vegas Monday morning and uh, Sunday night about 10, 10 p.m. Uh, that's when the shots were fired and didn't know what was going on and uh, ended up being, I guess, in the wrong place at the wrong time. But I was in lockdown that whole night, and it brought back a lot of, obviously, memories, um, bad memories. Um, you know, obviously, PTSD is something right. that a lot of us uh, struggle with, and uh, yeah, definitely took resiliency to a whole new level, um, and been doing a lot more um, peer outreach. Uh, a lot of, uh, you've seen the last couple of years, communities like Parkland. I was down mm-hmm. in Parkland a couple of years ago doing a workshop with their uh, round table with their students a lot of the survivors bring columbine uh, bring a lot of different communities boston marathon uh, oklahoma city together to talk about and bring us to heal and uh, that's been a lot of the work i've been doing so and um, he now here we are on the pandemic and people are going through a lot in the last year and uh, started this podcast called dads and daughters with my uh, teenage uh, kids uh, one of them has asperger's given her a platform to talk about a lot of issues, uh, you know, mental health related, um, uh, anti-bullying, and we have celebrity, you know, I mentioned earlier, Johnny Damon's one of my best uh, buddies, he comes on every week, we had Mitch Swisher on last love week. Love Mitch uh, Swisher. That's yeah. yeah, we yeah. love yeah. Third, yeah. Like third base. Yeah, <laughs> great, we love Swish, and, uh, yeah. and then I'm doing Makes this sense. big charity <laughs> boxing match uh, in June, and I've, we've been uh, promoting this for 18 months, Jerry Cooney, who is a former boxing heavyweight yeah. legend, yeah. who uh, fought Larry Holmes, and we have uh, a lot of celebrities coming out to that. We have uh, Tracy Morgan, the comedian. Oh, Johnny Tracy. Damon's going to be in my corner. Iris Mickey Ward is training me. Uh, Iran Barkley, and we're going to have Doc Gooden as well coming to support me and uh, raising money for underprivileged kids in New Jersey. That's, and that's awesome. what it's all about. That's so it's awesome. all about the impact we make on lives, and uh, me getting in the ring for three rounds is uh, – I hope it looks pretty. I'm not <laughs> sure what it's going to look like, but we're going to have a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> now, um, Mike, um, you know, you've obviously had a unique, uh, I don't want to say opportunity, a unique experience of, you know, being in uh, um, incidents, of mass, incidents of mass violence, not once, but twice. And, you know, obviously those are, you know, very, uh, very morbid experiences. But um, how, what advice do you have for people? Like, you know, now you've, you've, you've gone through those experiences and you've been fortunate enough to make it through. What's some life advice you have for people to help them enhance the way they live their lives and live it to their fullest? Because just speaking to you for only like maybe 20 minutes, mm-hmm. I can tell that you're very full of life and you, you appreciate life very much. So how can, you, well, how can you give that to other people? Everybody heals differently. So for me, fit, getting involved in peer support groups, I was not a person to go to a one-on-one counselor. That was not in my DNA to talk, but I needed to be around people. I'm a type A personality. Athletes were addictive, too. We have to be out there. So I had to pick myself up and do something positive. Called survivor guilt, it was called in the beginning, but I just wanted to make an impact and help, and I didn't want to be sitting in my bedroom or just commiserating. So, same thing with Las Vegas. Uh, five days after, I was happened to be at an event with Johnny Bench in Charlotte, um, and uh, started to use the platform of being the only person to survive 9/11 in Vegas to start to help others, and I wanted to help the Las Vegas community because they were dealing with this tragedy and getting out there and saying, here, I can help you. I've been through 9-11. I can't say I can solve everything, but I can maybe make an impact on one person, two people, or many more. And uh, I feel like that's my mission in life is to promote resiliency and be out there and make an impact. And because, you know, everybody has their own way of healing. Uh, Fred Gutenberg lost his daughter, Jamie, in Parkland. uh, He's going to be on my show next month. He's dealing with the uh, that, that gun violence, and it took his daughter's life. And 
you know, it's it's hard. Um, you want to be an activist, but you also need to uh, kind of grieve. And Fred is dealing with both, being on uh, in Congress and the Joe, you know, a lot of mm-hmm. stuff he's been doing on a national level. And uh, but he's also as a parent has to grieve, and you got to take that time for yourself and heal before you can help others. So I always say, help yourself before you help the others, because otherwise you'll be in a very tough. I found myself doing too much. I had to slow it down, and now I'm kind of being being able to pick up again and help others. Yeah, that's good. What? So, oh, go, oh ahead. go ahead. No, no that's you. Um, being surviving 9/11 and surviving other, you know, violence attacks. W- what made you push through and and you know fight? Because some people say, you know, I don't want to go through this. I can't go through this, and they they give up. But what was your mindset, or what were you, what were you fighting for? Well, you know, it's kind of like what I'm doing with this boxing match with Jerry Quinn. It's like that Rocky mindset. When you get knocked down, you got to pick yourself back up again mm-hmm. and move forward. And I kind of had that instilled in me from a young age. Uh, we all get setbacks in life, and uh, I think everybody's just got to find that resiliency within them to get back up. It may not be easy, but find that goal and keep setting goals and uh, and you know, over time. And, like you know, it's a journey. You know, nothing can happen overnight, so you got to take little bit – small goals, and that's what I've been doing with this boxing match. I had to learn how to, yeah, I'm almost 50 years old um, in August, and uh, to get in the ring and start to learn how to move and learn how to breathe properly in the ring and have Mickey Ward really put me through boot camp to get uh, prepared. It's like little steps at a time. I'm not going to be ready to go out and fight Mike Tyson next <laughs> week, but uh, Jerry Cooney's 65 years old, and uh, but I tell you, he's got a killer left hook, uh, especially to the body. But I got to be prepared, and you can't prepare overnight. So you take small increments, and yeah. uh, that's what that's what it's all about: is getting yourself back up and uh, and helping and kind of uh, following through in the journey, so that there's nothing left un- you know unturned by the time the fight night comes around. So I, I think that you know podcasts, we're podcasts here, and I think podcasts really go under the radar a lot. And for you to you know for your daughter to have a podcast, I really want to hear more about that and more kind of a detail too, because I think I find that amazing, you know, to to have that platform. And to go through that and still use your platform to kind of boost it in a way, I think is fantastic. Well, I'm part of a network called the Chapters Wrap with Steve Vaccaro. It's uh, and it's uh, amazing on Facebook. If you find that, uh, there's a lot of shows. Mine is one of about eight or nine different shows okay. that we air, very different topics, and we have another show that has two autism advocates that do a uh, weekly show. Mine is more focused on the dad daughter bond. And, you know, Kelly's uh, an adult, my older daughter, dealing with special needs and giving her an ability to use her platform to focus on kindness, acceptance, humility, and love. That's her platform. And we have guests on every week, and it's not just a celebrity show. We try to bring other people to have something to bring to the table, whether it's uh, autism. I had, uh, I've had Joe Montana, the actor. We've had uh, Jerry Cooney, the boxing guys from my uh, – uh, Johnny Damon's always a frequent guest on my show. Nick Swisher, as I mentioned, um, guys like that, but uh, guys that are supporting philanthropy, some causes that are doing good. We don't just bring somebody who just is a former player. We want to know what people do with their lives after their yeah. careers are over, like I've done. I had a cup of coffee in the NFL. Mine didn't even – it wasn't even a cup of coffee. I think it, <laughs> it was kind of uh, <laughs> still there. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, I've been supporting the NFL alumni chapters, uh, Carolinas, and I've been supporting them for years with fundraising, with events, and I've been part of the family. The NFL alumni is such a great family that we bring each other together, whether you had a 20-year career or you had a cup of coffee like me, but we all help each other, support each other, reciprocation, and that's what it's all about. And I feel like, although I didn't get to have the Super Bowl glory that Tom Brady is going to have on Sunday, I still get to live the dream, and it's come full circle. You know, I started my whole career down here in Tampa. Here I am back here, and 20 years ago when the Giants played the Ravens, um, Leroy Selman, who's the uh, Buccaneers legend, he was the USF athletic director at the time, had me on the field uh, pregame, and I got to like live the dream of what it's like on a Super Bowl Sunday, and uh, amazing. So I really feel like I've accomplished everything I could in the. Uh, this is my last athletic endeavor in this uh, boxing match, June fifth. Uh, it's called www.ycs.org. Is the where you can find the website donate to help these underprivileged kids and come out to the boxing match out in Hoboken, New Jersey, if you choose. It'll be live streamed as well, and uh, we're going to have a fun time and uh, hopefully raise some money. After that, I take up golf, and you'll never see me boxing or doing anything. <laughs> right <laughs> off into the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I, oh, I actually have two more that I'm done, I promise, and you guys can go. Uh, who's a better golfer, you or Johnny Damon? Yeah, 
Johnny Damon way better. Okay, <laughs> and then two Hoboken, <laughs> yeah, Cake Boss or Carlos Bakery. Oh, so yeah, Carlos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that good? Is it? Is it what people say it is? Great. Um, I'm very connected with Mariano Rivera. At our first golf outing we had with Mariano, the Cake Boss came down there. I know and that made guy. These, yeah, he made some <laughs> really cool cookies and cakes and uh, addictive. But you know, I'm trying to lose weight for the fight, so I try to stay away from Cake Boss guys now <laughs> until June 5th. June 5th, I'll start eating again and getting back on there but no it's uh that's some great stuff uh, um okay Co- a couple questions myself mm. one is so you know you've mentioned john johnny damon a couple times how, how do you guys become so close he's become family to me johnny you know johnny met through the yankees uh through the tampa network uh when i was down here and uh you know he lives in orlando and uh he took such a special liking to my daughter and that's how i judge people i'd be c- quite frank about it with uh, especially around a lot of the celebrity events i do how they react to her, and Johnny and his wife, Michelle, took her in as one of their own, and uh, Johnny's got a big family. He's got uh, eight kids total. Um, he's got a really a cool cool house, um, and we come every year, hang out, and support his golf event and his charity, and he's just become, like, really, truly an extended part of the family to her, and anytime she's being featured on a news story, that's going to air next week, and uh, he just came on his uh, FaceTime just to support what she was doing, and uh, like I can call him any time of the week, and that's he's there 24-7, Mitch Swisher, guys like that as well. Those are the kind of people I like to support myself around, the people that are going to support what my kids are doing and support support me and the podcast, and uh, it's been an amazing, just like Jerry Cooney was a guy that I've been I've known for 15, 20 years. I was a fan of Jerry back in the day when he was boxing Larry Holmes, and uh, now he's become part of the family. So I said, you know, i uh, love to get in a ring. Just don't hurt me too bad. Um, you know, I want to wear the headgear. But, uh, you know, to be in the ring with Jerry Cooney is truly a, a absolute dream. My amateur boxing career was short. I won one match, lost three. <laughs> cup, of <laughs> yeah, cup of coffee. Yeah, <laughs> cup of coffee. That's another cup. It wasn't good. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah. I, I got disqualified for spitting my mouthpiece out in one of my uh, amateur fights. So. This is redemption for me, quite frankly, to be able to uh, Rocky Six. get in the ring like Rocky Six. <laughs> Antonio Tarver, by the way, did train me here in Tampa. When I was down here last time before the pandemic shut us down in March of 2020, I trained with Antonio with the Magic Man and uh, started to get – we were ready to go last June and it was canceled. But uh, I'm going to see Tarver this week and uh, Mason Dixon, the Rocky Balboa movie. and uh, But Mickey Ward's my guy. i got to say the Irish Mickey Ward training me has been – such a great experience uh the legend who fought Arturo Gatti in that trilogy and uh just his style um one Irish guy to another it's been a it's been a true true blessing I gotta ask okay I mean like you know you mentioned Mike Tyson who's doing an incredible thing right now in fighting at his age but he's also like not human he's a superhuman so you're you know not a regular guy you're also semi superhuman (laughs) semi superhuman (laughs) at age 50 you're gonna be going in the ring can you talk us through really quickly what you're doing like training wise and meal prep wise from a guy you know who's kind of curious about that stuff yeah i've been actually training mark Wahlberg and his family jimmy Wahlberg. Mar- mark mark, mark Wahlberg, you know mark yeah, yeah. He okay does that's a that's <laughs> you just throwing names well around does <laughs> mark does a thing called f45 um if you look it up it's one of the most amazing uh workout regimens that i've been doing for the last uh a little bit over a year and a couple of months and mark was the one who hooked me up with it and his brother paul and uh, we were doing a charity event together. They said, you got to do F45. So I said, what is F45? And I started to found a gym locally in Raleigh, North Carolina that got me in there. So I do that in combination with the boxing. Uh, to me, it was the stamina, getting in shape and having the endurance to go. Because three rounds sound short. And I'll tell you what, when you're in the ring uh, for six minutes, nine minutes, it goes a long time. I bet, so yeah. breathing and learning that stuff. And this fitness program for – a 49-year-old has done amazing. I lost about 35, 40 pounds, and uh, I'm in tremendous shape. Uh, now I just got to learn how to box. I'm kidding. But, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel – but Mark <laughs> Wahlberg, he's my age, and we tease each other. I mean, he has uh, – he's definitely in such phenomenal shape for the movie roles he does, and if Mark is doing it, I'm going to do it. So. Any questions? Get, you got to get Mark on here. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that, too, <laughs> firsthand. We had a question oh, over here. Yep. Yeah, uh, you talk about your daughter and her podcast. You guys have a podcast together. If you can go into some more detail on what you know you're trying to do with that podcast. Absolutely, I think it's increasing awareness for 
uh, special need kids. I talk with abilities beyond disabilities. Kelly has a lot of talents, and uh, she's 18, and she's going out into the adult world, transitioning, and becoming using this platform to uh, talk about things that we need in this world right now: kindness, acceptance, humility, and love. And seeing all the division that's happened in our country and over the last year with the political elections and. Kelly looks at that as a kid and says, I need to change. I want to be a voice of change. Mm-hmm. So she's actually won this Voices of Change Award that the new station locally has given to her for this month. And uh, I think they're giving her a incredible platform, and I want to support her and building her network of people to do be able to do what I'm doing, go across the country. I speak at conferences, uh, roundtables across the country on things that I'm doing around resiliency. I want Kelly to have that platform and help others. She wants to help other people, not just herself. So I want to give her a platform not just to help her um, confidence, but also to help others, which is what she wants to do. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I was talking with uh, Tyree Kill yesterday, and we were talking about yeah. like adversity and stuff like that. I think you are like the definition of adversity and overcoming it, and how you know just to uh, just to keep pushing through and like. Fantastic. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I think thank you very much it. for yeah. taking the time. Taking the thank time. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Pleasure. yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, be sure to check out your your podcast, your daughter's podcast, and the event. Can you can you say it one more time for us that the boxing event? Where to go to for that? It's yeah. It's www.ycs.org. Okay. It's the uh, YCS Jerry Cooney Fight Night. Okay. And uh, we're gonna have a whole list of celebrities there. Vinny Pazienza. We got uh, Johnny Damon, Tracy Morgan. Doc Gooden, uh, Larry Holmes, who's going to be in Jerry's corner, unfortunately, <laughs> but he's taking <laughs> the wrong corner to be in, but <laughs> I'm okay with that. I ran Barkley. I mean, we have a lot of great guys. That's awesome. Sopranos guys coming out as whoa, well. Yeah. I have some Sopranos in my corner. All right. Yeah. We got some viewers who yeah. really love Sopranos, so you big might, that's, sopranos. Yeah, big Sopranos. Yeah, our podcast. viewership just went up the roo- yeah, went up through huge, the roof. That's through that. huge. That's that huge. We got Dan Grimaldi. We got uh, <laughs> Artie Pasquale. We got a lot of guys oh, in Sopranos coming oh out. Oh, boy. We got Steve Sharippa. We got Vinny Pastore as well. Oh, <laughs> so, right, we, might have to, we might have to make a trip, over, a fully loaded trip over <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, we might have to do that. <laughs> Take the time. Yep. All right, Michael, thank All right. you. Appreciate it.